All right, very good. <clears throat> We're going to go very fast today. I have a lot of slides. Uh, pardon me if I cough a little bit. I'm uh, getting over uh, pneumonia. Compliments of uh, being deployed to the Middle East and vaccinations and just getting exhausted. So I apologize for that, but uh, we'll move along. A little bit on my background. We've already gone through that. We're going to talk about really core issues today, and there's a lot of things that we could talk about relative to food quality, but the thing about it is is that all of them really, as you see up on the board, are kind of peripheral issues. You know, we could talk about organics. We could talk about A1 versus A2 milk. We could talk about a number of different things, but there's some real important core issues, and those have to do with the declining nutrient value of the food itself, so even the herbs that you use today or any of the diets that you use today are not what they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, and certainly what they were 50 years ago. So the same recommendations today just don't cut it as well as they did 50 years ago. But more importantly, the whole issue of genetic engineering as well as the uh, problem of a new plague, really, that is coming out, and we're going to call that the food plague. And... Um, then finally, what are you going to do about it? Because I uh, don't like to just leave people in a position of, oh my goodness, you know, you gave us all this bad news, now what are we going to do? Uh, there is absolutely a solution and it is happening, so we'll move through with that. Well, core food issues really are having to do with, number one, nutrient density. The only reason we really, really we eat, yes, there's a social aspect to it, but the only reason we really eat is to take in nutrition vitamins, minerals, amino acids, antioxidants, and so on and so forth. And so the level that we actually get in the food per bite or ounce or however you want to put it really is the most important issue. How much nutrient is actually there? Well, the problem with it is, is that agriculture is a little bit like medicine. The percentage of farmers that understand nutrition are about equal to the percentage of doctors that understand nutrition. Now, recognize most of you are very much in the minority, are we not? In the medical profession. It's the same thing in agriculture, unfortunately. But we'll talk about that only briefly. The real issue is the genetic engineering of foods. And how many of you understand really what is a genetic engineering process? Probably not too many. Well, we'll go through it here in a minute, but genetic engineering is not at all like traditional plant breeding. It is an infection process. And like any other infective process, including viral infection, because that's part of it, there are adverse consequences. There are going to be immune responses to that process. In addition to that, what has surfaced more and more, and particularly it was found about 12, 13 years ago by a veterinarian in um, Kentucky, and that is, is a new infective agent. And this infective agent is uh, pretty consequential. It's interesting to me how part of our industry, in fact, there was a show not too long ago talking about how, gee, we're, we're so happy that our abstinence program has worked because teenage pregnancies have gone down. The only thing they couldn't answer, though, or rectify with that, well, how do you justify that teenage pregnancies have gone down, yet access to... Uh, birth control has gone down, and teenage sexual activity has gone up. How do you rectify that? There's only one thing. It's called infertility. The next thing is, is of course, what are we going to do about that then, and what are some of the consequences of dealing with that? Well, if we have a low glycemic diet, and, and uh, I follow a low glycemic diet as much as possible, what you have to understand is, is that all the wonderful low glycemic diet in the world is not going to solve or overcome significant endocrine disruptors that go in through that food as a result of genetically engineered foods. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. So while diet has been acknowledged as being a very important correlative to health and disease, the nutrient value of our foods, as I said, has gone down. In fact, the more high-tech farming becomes, the more deficient the food has become. Previous speaker talked about the ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. If you go to the store today and you look at standard beef and you haven't analyzed, and Iowa State has done that, you'll find about a 15 to 20 to 1 ratio between omega-6 and omega-3. All right? Probably doesn't surprise any of you. 
How many of you are aware, though, that if we just take those same cattle, well, not those same cattle because they're dead, but we take cattle, beef cattle, and we put them on just grass pasture, we'll drop that ratio to about a 5 to 1. But if we actually do something smart to get the nutritional value of that grass up, we can drop it to a 1 to 1 ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. So now when you talk about eating lean red meat, it's a whole different ball game than what you were previously talking about. Well, what are we talking about relative to nutrition? So if we take this salad, you know it's a nice mixed green salad, and we analyze that salad, we think, hey, we're doing such a great job. Compared today, compared to 1940, well actually this analysis that I'm going to show you is 1991 compared to 1940. What we're looking at is a significant decline in the actual nutrient value of that salad, anywhere from a 15 to a 76% decline, depending on which nutrient you're going to talk about. So even though we think we're doing such a great job, eating that same 8-ounce salad, we're getting a significantly less amount of nutrient today than we would have in 1940. And supposedly we have all this great technology that's improved everything. That's not just here in the United States. The Brits have done the same kind of a comparison. And if you look at this, this is through the uh, Composition of Foods Ministry of Agriculture in the UK. If you look at vegetables, anywhere from a 16 to a 76% decline in nutrient value, particularly mineral value here they're looking at, major minerals. And in fruits, anywhere from a 15 to 29%. Why the difference between fruits and vegetables? Because vegetables are typically annuals, so they don't have as big a root system, where your fruits are perennials, they're on a tree. Trees have a much bigger and deeper root system, so they're able to excavate more nutrient than is a vegetable. So that's why the difference. Well, the chemical treadmill is what has happened as a result of what's going on. We call it the chemical or pesticide treadmill because it self-perpetuates. Because what happens is, is that we have a program that is proposed by USDA on how to grow crops. Well, that program of growing crops guarantees you will have weeds, diseases, and insects. Because, like doctors who do not acknowledge that nutrition is correlated to health and disease, farmers and university professors do not acknowledge that nutrition is correlated to weeds, diseases, and insects in plants. So, of course, there no, there's no way that that can happen. And so the nutritional approach that they take guarantees you will have weeds, diseases, and insects, which means what? You will have to buy more pesticides, which means you will have more insects, diseases, and weeds because you're creating more problems in the soil, causing more dysbiosis in the soil. You're creating more resistant weeds, and so the treadmill just continues to go and go and go until finally you get to the point you can't control them anymore. Then what? Oh, well, we have this wonderful new thing called genetic engineering. We're going to engineer the plants so that we can spray enough pesticide on them to kill the weeds. Wonderful theory. It's not working. And in fact, there's some significant consequences to that whole process, both because of the pesticide and because of the genetically engineered product. And so, as you can see, how did we get to GMOs? The whole GMO concept really is a business concept. It's not a science concept. In fact, the industry does not want us to have a scientific discussion because they'll lose that in 15 minutes. So they do everything they can to make this an emotional discussion. Oh, you're just anti-technology. Oh, you just want to be back in the bat dark ages. And, of course, that, that uh, garners up a lot of emotion in people. Oh, no, 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 I'm not anti-technology. Well, you must be. You're anti-GMO. Because they cannot win a scientific debate. And they know that.